G'day team, it's Josh, and I'm on the hunt for the highest powered portable laptop that runs cool and quiet. And today, I'm gonna to give you my review of the Razer Blade 15 Studio Edition laptop. This is a $4,000 laptop, and that means I'm gonna be extremely tough on it. There are certain things that I would accept in a $2,000 laptop that I absolutely won't accept at that price range. For comparison purposes, as I know that's how a lot of people shop, I am gonna compare this laptop to the Aero 17 and the Aero 15 OLED. I'm also gonna draw comparisons between it and the Razer Blade 15 Advanced. Now, a lot of people have asked me, what about the Asus Pro Duo or the Electronics Mag? My thoughts on that are coming in a future video, so hang tight. Many folks have asked me why the heck does it take this long to review a laptop since the unboxing a couple of weeks ago, and I just want to address this. The reason is I like to review these laptops my way, which means I like to provide in-depth coverage, you know, so you guys know what it's like to actually experience owning and using this laptop like an everyday user would. I don't want to just open up the box, run a bunch of benchmarks, hop online and just parrot them back to you. I really wanted to give you something deeper. This is a long video and it certainly took a lot of work. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the thumbs up. It certainly motivates me to create more content like this for you. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive in. Firstly, let's hit stability. I have really good news here. This laptop has been rock solid. I've had no blue screens, no freezes, no crashes. When I close the lid, the laptop goes into standby or sleep mode as expected and I've certainly put it through the paces. So well done here, Razer, you finally did it. The display is awesome, one of the best I've used. It's bright, it's crisp, it's vibrant, and the colors really pop. It's a standout feature of the laptop. Compared to the Aero 15's OLED display, I think this one is better due to the coating used on it. With the Aero 15's, if dust particles got onto it, it had this effect like water drops on an LCD where the colors went a bit off. I've had no problems like this on this laptop. I haven't had to wipe it down with an anti-static cloth, which I had to do all the time on the Aero 15's. The other thing that's great about this laptop is, you know, reflections are really handled quite well. I've had no problems using this laptop in a very bright room inside, and I even believe it should be fine to use outdoors in some sunlight. Compared to the Aero 17's display, this display looks a little bit on the green side, just slightly. I do prefer the colors used on the Aero 17. This may be due to the DCI-P3 color calibration used in this laptop, but I'm not sure. And of course, one is OLED and one isn't. The touchscreen works really well as expected, and funnily enough, was one of the features that I really found myself missing on the Aero 15 OLED. The sound here is very good, no problems at all. The two front facing speakers right here do a really good job. It's not the best sound that I've heard in a laptop, but it's quite up there. Now, audio latency isn't great, but it's not bad. It's certainly better than what I see on the Aero 17. The keyboard is uncomfortable to type on. It's really shallow. And there's this odd keyboard layout on the right side, where if you go and reach over to hit the right arrow, you often accidentally hit the function key because it's placed where that key normally is. Overall, the keyboard is better than the MacBook Pro's butterfly keyboard, but it's still not great. Just typing up this review, I kind of felt I was getting a little bit of carpal tunnel because it was so uncomfortable. Now, the one saving grace is it has this really cool thing with the function keys backlighting. When you hit the function key, the rest of the keyboard's backlight goes dark and the backlight just in the function keys light up. It makes it really easy to see. The biggest problem in the keyboard, I believe, is that they just didn't put their brand new keyboard into this laptop. Razer have announced a brand new optical keyboard in their Razer Blade Advanced, but it isn't in this laptop. They both came out at the same time and this is a $4,000 laptop. Razer really should have put their best tech in this laptop. The trackpad is great, equal to the loved Surface Book trackpad. The chassis continues to not disappoint. It's one of the most solid out there, even if it does conduct some heat and get warm to the touch. And yes, you could open the lid with one hand. The SSD has excellent speeds. You can't fault an AS SSD score of 5,000. The RAM runs in dual channel at 2667 megahertz. 
the SD card reader is a handy addition and worked well. I wasn't able to test the UHS-2 speeds as I don't have a UHS-2 card, but I have ordered one in. The webcam is acceptable and in the right place, and the quality is somewhat decent for a gaming laptop, but for $4,000 I have no clue why Razer stuck with the 720 webcam and didn't go for the higher quality 1081 like in the Surface Book 215. The power brick is exactly the same as that of the Razer Blade 15 Advance coming in at 230 watts. Battery life is okay in this laptop, expect about 4-6 to six hours depending on usage. Unfortunately, the laptop cannot be charged via its USB-C port. This is a big drawback for me, and I do know that USB-C can only deliver up to 100 watts of power, but that's absolutely ample for everyday browsing the web or Word or whatnot. And because this laptop's battery life isn't great, it would be super handy to be able to charge it with a USB Type-C power brick, because those power bricks are really lightweight and they're really cheap. The laptop's CPU performance is identical to that of the Razer Blade 15 Advanced. No surprises there because they use the same chassis and the same CPU. It's undervolted by negative 100 millivolts out of the box, but I found no problems undervolting it to a negative 130 millivolts in all my performance tests. It was perfectly stable. To keep the CPU cool, Razer has chosen to power limit it. I have found two very distinct settings that the CPU runs at. If CPU performance is set to max and GPU performance is set to medium, the CPU will run at 80 watts for about 10 seconds before dropping to a consistent 45 watts. If you have the GPU performance set to max, then the CPU will run at a consistent 35 watts. On the screen are my configs and settings that I ran for the Razer Blade Studio with the 6-core i7-9750H Quadro 5000 Max-Q, and also the Aero 17 8-core i9-9980HK with the GeForce 2070 Max-Q that I threw in for comparison. Here are my Cinebench R15 results. You'll notice that the Razer performs worse than other laptops with the 9750H, which normally score around 1,200 points. This is due to the power limit throttling. Here are my Cinebench R20 results. Here are my Geekbench 5 results. These are actually pretty decent. That's because Geekbench doesn't max out the CPU like Cinebench does. Here is a database import comparison. Here is a code compilation comparison. Overall, the CPU performed fairly well for short tasks, but definitely won't be winning any awards as the fastest 9750H. Now let's talk about the supposedly hyped and exciting Quadro 5000 RTX Max-Q card in this laptop. GPU Z scores on screen. This laptop surprisingly uses the game ready drivers, not the studio drivers. I was quite confused about this as I saw the game ready driver listed for this laptop on Razer's website. I also went to Nvidia's site and downloaded the RTX Quadro driver, but I found it still installed the game ready driver. I contacted Nvidia who confirmed that the studio driver is not for the Quadro cards, only the GeForce cards. Nice and confusing there, Nvidia. Before we get started, this is the first time I've really run rendering focus benchmarks. So if I've run any of them incorrectly or interpreted any of the results incorrectly, just let me know in the comments below and I'll rerun. Here are my GPU benchmark scores and this is where it gets interesting. I have deliberately left off which performance tests are for the Quadro 5000 Max-Q in the Blade Studio and which are for the 2070 Max-Q in the Aero 17 because I want you to understand just how close these are. Here is which is which. For Blender, I tested both the standard BMW test as well as an EV animation test. I really don't see much of a difference between the 2070 Max-Q in the Aero 17 and the Quadro 5000 in the Blade. For V-Ray GPU test, the Blade Studio actually performed worse. And I ran this many, many times just to confirm it. For Premiere Pro 4K video hardware export, I found that the scores were almost identical between the two. For 3D Mark tests, I found that the Quadro 5000 performed a decent amount better than the 2070 Max-Q, a similar difference to the 2080 Max-Q compared to the 2070 Max-Q. When it came to gaming, I found that the Razer Blade Studio had no problems with higher than 60 FPS on ultra settings on two of the latest titles, Battlefield 5 and Borderlands 3. Upping the settings to 2K, I found the games to be comfortably playable around the 60 FPS mark on ultra settings. 4K though was simply too much for this laptop, even with settings dialed back to medium. From what I'm seeing, this laptop performs almost identical to the Razer Blade 15 advanced model with the 2080 Max-Q. I'm seeing nothing special with this Quadro 5000 RTX Max-Q card. Now, 
Let's take a look at that. That laptop costs $3,299. If you spend an extra $400, you can upgrade the RAM to 32 gig of RAM, a one terabyte very fast SSD, and an SD card reader. You could sell the 512 gig and the 16 gig of RAM that that Razer Blade 15 Advance comes with on the market for say $100. That means for $3,600, not $4,000, you're getting a black version of this laptop. So I'd really advise you to think twice. Do you really need the Mercury white version of this laptop and an extra 8 gig of VRAM? If not, go for that one. In terms of fan noise, Razer's choice of using that power limiting policy plus an excellent thermal design keeps this laptop super quiet. I cannot speak highly enough about how quiet this laptop is. Hammering it with my full suite of performance benchmarks, it was barely louder than the air conditioning unit behind me. Plus, when it's not running intensive tasks, it's really, really quiet, almost dead silent. The fans occasionally come on, but it's pretty quiet. So well done there, Razer. You've really produced a quiet laptop and it is much quieter than the Aero 17. The highest CPU temperature I ever recorded was only 83 degrees Celsius. And that was when it was pulling 80 watts of power. At 45 watts of power, it only runs around 63 degrees Celsius. So don't worry about your CPU overheating in this laptop. The above being said, although the benefits are there of this power limiting approach to fan noise and cooling, that choice should have been left up to you. I really believe Razer should let the user choose to run this laptop at a higher power level at the expense of fan noise if they wanted to. So let's wrap. This laptop is rock solid and very stable. It's incredibly fast in graphical related tasks. It runs insanely cool and quiet. It looks great and it has everything a content creator could need, including 32 gig of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and of course the SD card reader. Plus, it's a gaming beast. The cons are that the Quadro 5000 Max-Q is a disappointment. In my tests, it really doesn't perform any better than say the 2080 Max-Q that's in the Razer Blade 15 Advance. So if you don't mind the black model, heed my advice there and consider getting that one and just upgrading the parts yourself. The CPU isn't the fastest version of the 9750H because of the power limiting. The keyboard is really uncomfortable to type on and it's a big disappointment that Razer didn't put their brand new keyboard in this brand new model. The webcam isn't great and you can't charge off USB Type-C. Overall though, this is an excellent laptop and if you have the $4,000, I don't see any problems in you buying this laptop. Seriously, it is, I believe, the best laptop in the 15 inch form factor. That being said, whether the marginal benefits of spending that extra money are worth it to you, that's your choice. Anyway folks, that's all for today. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it. Reply with comments if you have any questions. Till next time, I'll catch you later.